Hello and welcome to the morning meeting, Building John Boy Media. My name is Jimmy. His name is Matthew. It's July 30th. It's trade deadline. We're about to go live on Talking Baseball in a little bit, so there might be some breaking news as this episode goes. It's been a little bit, though, because I had the All-Star trip, and then I was on vacation. So we're back to talk to you. We got questions. We got topics. If you want to leave a question later on, uh, leave a question, leave it on this episode, and we'll answer it next episode. Yeah. Yeah. How leave a you? question down there. I'm pretty good. Uh, last time we did an episode here, we were trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. We asked, we were like 16 away. We asked and like 300 people subscribed. So wow. the challenge today, we're 200 away from 21,000. Mm, so that doesn't have as much goose. It though. doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. But, but thank you to the people that did subscribe last yes. time. Yes. That's awesome. And we subscribe. Appreciate it. I'm good. Uh, you mentioned your trip. Uh, other than the kids now being sick, mm. I believe. Yeah. Um, how was that? Was that the first beach trip that maybe is James is like remembering? Yeah. He's like actively in love with it. Like wants to go down the, down the door, play mini golf down the door, mm. played a lot of mini golf, played a lot of games, very tiring to go on vacation with two little kids, but it was really, really fun and rewarding and a, a good break. I, I really took a break from content as opposed to past years. I like usually will always just do talking Yanks, mm. but Joe's was available and, um, and I didn't do the boon app. Yep. Which is hard to like, cause I'm like, those are easy. I'm watching the game. I can do this, but it was nice not doing. Yeah. I actually like after the game ended, we were like, we went to play mini golf. I was able to like go around, watch on my phone a little bit. So it was good. It was a nice little break. I, I had to do one breakdown during a, the trip and I did it like the first Saturday and then it was good. Nice. But yeah, now they're sick. James is a baby, just like his mom, which is rude, but she knows it. Like when they're sick, daddy, hold me. Mm. As soon as I get home. Right. Hold me. Yeah, sick. It's nice. It's nice to be loved. <laughs> Sure. Um, the other topical piece of info here is that the Olympics are on, and that's kind of just a Fun Sport Friday live stream, more or less. So have you been watching and enjoying? Uh, yesterday I had a ton on. I wouldn't say I was, like, tuned into any. I'd love to be. I'm having trouble. It's It's very hard to do these days, which it's well written and talked about, you know, I just do kind of like miss when you would just sit down and turn on NBC and they would show you stuff. Now it's like I go to the Peacock website and I look at what's on, but I, I don't have those in between shots where they're filling you in. And I don't want to watch that show because it's so little action. I want to mm -hmm. watch the action, but if you watch the action, you don't get the narrative and the storylines. So I'm having trouble. I also don't want to watch sports that I watch. Like, I don't want to watch... I know basketball is very popular, so people like that, and that's... I'm not really knocking that. But it was... Um, like, I want to watch sports that I don't watch unless it's the Olympics. Swimming, gymnastics, running. Have they done track and field at all yet? That hasn't no, started no, yet, right? that's the second week. Um, handball, field hockey, like all those weird things is what I want to watch. But it is hard to find stuff. Are we winning? U.S. is in first medal count. Way to go. France second, home cooking, huh? Yeah, seriously. Well, that's what uh, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but uh, the tennis player Coco Goff. Yeah, she uh, she kind of alluded to that because apparently there was a tough call today, and she said every time I'm at the French Open, something like this seems to happen. Wow, I don't so, know. It feels like not cool. I don't know about that. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like what you're saying. I feel like when I was a kid, and maybe this is because of what you're saying that there's less streams and everything, but it was like, okay, we're all sitting down as a family and Michael Phelps is coming on yeah. in like half an hour. Dude, Phelps was awesome. Oh my God. And that gymnastics team, even back in like 2011, around that, yeah. the U.S. gymnastics team, we're going up against, was it China? They had all like 14 year olds. Yeah. They're all really young. Yeah. That I remember being an event. I was in college, but like 
we were at a college party and we yeah. all sat around and watched it. Ali Ray's man. I don't know how you, I don't know if that ever gets recreated with in the world of streaming and, and, and devices, which stinks because it was kind of like a cultural event. Well, I'm glad that somebody else is feeling this because I was kind of just like, Hmm, I must like now not being in my childhood house, my parents putting it on, I might just be lost, but no, it seems like it's different. It's very, different there's not than one it place. Yeah. It seems unless you still have cable, which I do. But I watched the Yankees game. Anyway, now I have, I just clicked it on the Australian men's field hockey team where the dude amputated his finger so he could play. Flip off the camera. He amputated this finger. That's what he looks like now. But this knuckle. Can't do it. Yeah, didn't work. Um, you talked about yesterday how the Olympics were on, but you didn't really watch. And that's because you finished four breakdowns yesterday, which is impressive. There was like a little stir around the office. I don't know if you Yeah, people were very worried. The people that keep my calendar or like, you know, try to make sure I'm not overwhelmed were worried. Four breakdown week. But I had like, you prepped some while I was on vacation. And there was a, there was a day or two where I put the kids down to nap and I didn't nap. So I just kind of like started tinkering with them. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I did was I started just laying them on my timeline for premiere. And then the Tori Lovello one in live time, I could just read his lips. So I was like, well, let me write these down while I have them. And so then they were like kind of started. Then I was in there and messing around. And I, so I had a bunch prepped already. And then, and then, what was I going to say? The Lavella one was interesting because there was another, there's the umpire, Jordan Baker. Or it was Salvi Perez. Is that video? It hasn't come out yet. I watched him so many times. I couldn't figure out what he was saying. Watched him so many times. And then I woke up on Monday, the day I came in here, and watched it. And again, in live time, just like not even slowing it down or going frame by frame, I just saw it. It was like I was on the wrong beat mm -hmm. every time. So the, sometimes you just come in and then I got, Got it, and it was actually pretty funny because he said, I hate you guys, which is good. Good stuff by Salvi. That one's not out yet, but yeah, so, I, but I needed to do that to get like onto a normal week because today I haven't been able to do any personal editing. Yeah. It's all shows. Tomorrow is, I think I have a ton of meetings and it's a day game for the Yankees. Thursday, we'll be in the warehouse live streaming. Come join us. Game to 100 runs. That's right. We have like uh, four live events happening on the Warehouse Games channel this month. And the first one is a, a Blitzball game to 100 runs with a bunch of different caveats and rules that we'll explain when you get there. But could be a five-hour stream, could be a six-hour stream, could be a 20-inning game, could be a 10-inning game. We have no idea. First to 100 runs. It's going to be interesting. We just made a bunch of the rules, which I like where we landed on a lot of them. Um, yeah, no, that is going to be a long one, but I think that it's going to be exciting. Um, and then you also mentioned yesterday, like now we are kind of like unique event free or like travel free so that from now until the playoffs, you should be more or less just locked into status quo. Yeah. I should be able to get into a groove, Yeah, which we knew. We knew that June and July was going to be like a grind. And worth it because we got into like different avenues. We got revenue from different places, doing the cricket stuff, doing the all-star trip, doing a bunch of like one-off weird events, doing the Amtrak trip to Boston. Um, but definitely like took its toll for a while. Yeah. And it was no sleep, which was not good. Yeah. One, one more event with Boone next week. So if you haven't gotten tickets for that, by all means, head that way. Shop.johnboymedia.com. Um, but yeah, Boom. come heckle them. Heckle. If you want, uh, nice let's talk thing. about some of those things that were unique events over the past few bits. Uh, you went to Dallas for the all-star game and then recently after vacation did the trip to Fenway. Yes. Uh, first talking to Dallas, how did you feel like the trip went overall as a whole? It was very hot mm. and we didn't have a good Wi-Fi at the house. Other than that, it was good. Like, it was a really busy trip. The cricket stuff was really cool, getting to do that and be in both worlds. Um, 
Seeing Coach, Coach Ball game was awesome. Uh, Home Run Derby is a wild event. That was fun. But mostly just fun hanging out with everyone. Like I playing neighbor ball was really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, playing made up golf games in the backyard. Everyone hanging out. Watching videos together at night. Like all that was was fun. Yeah. Too hot though. Yeah, the videos the last night was one of my favorite parts. I wish that went for longer. And I remained amazing on the ping pong table. Yeah, 21 and 2. 21 and 2. I lost two games, yeah. Took a picture with those guys. Yeah, because actually I was 20 I was 22 and 1. And I was going to take a picture of him cuz he kind of looked like Altuve. And he was dressed in full Astros gear. And I thought that was a great picture. And then I lost to the last guy. Right. I was getting real blurry eyed though. It's getting dark. My eyes yeah. were strained. Played a lot of ping pong. It was dark. Which was my, sure. I went undefeated in LA two years ago. Oh, okay. But I realized it. I'm pretty warm because I've been playing the whole time. Mm. Guys that come play me aren't warm. And some of them are a little nervous to play. Because I'm not better than a lot of those guys. One guy was way better than me. I beat him three times. We right. went we went extras every time. He yeah. was way better than me. Hey, I mean, it's all about the extras. Yeah. Can't clutch I beat it up. 12, 12, 10, no, 13, 11, 13, 11, 13, 11, or something like that. I forget. Okay. It was nice. Um, random trade, Kansas City finalizing a right-handed reliever, Lucas Erkeg from the Oakland A's. Who are they sending to Oakland to play in the AAA stadium next year? That's got to be the most. That's what I've been thinking about, how devastating. Anyone uh, that's getting traded to the A's has to just be. That's the, that's the worst news. Besides if you're on a contender and you're contributing and then you get traded to a non-contender, that stinks. But, like, you know, if you are a budding prospect or in the in MLB player and you get traded to the A's right now. That stinks. Yeah. I saw one video short that some guy was like, I bet they're going to sell out every game in Sacramento. And then by the time they're ready to move to Vegas, they're going to be like, wait, we just sold out all of this. So we'll actually just improve this stadium here and do an expansion team in Vegas. Thoughts? Well, they don't have the financing for Vegas was the newest thing. Mm. So I, it, the thing is a whole mess. The Vegas AAA team, the Aviators, my big thing I wanted to look into was are they going to outdraw Are they going to outdraw the A's? Like if you're playing in AAA, are you playing in front of more fans than the A's? Like if you get promoted to the majors, now, right. Um. Wow. In two days, Las Vegas. No, in two dates. I want two dates. Mm -mm. I want the year. This is no. This says in two dates, Las Vegas total is fifteen thousand for an average of seven thousand five hundred seats. But that's just two days. I don't know what days they're talking about. I want like minor league baseball average attendance. Maybe they don't come out with them until the end of the year. Yeah, I don't think so. My minor league attendance. Let me see. Vegas. Yeah, you're going to see. Uh, 6,800 was their average attendance last year. The Las Vegas aviators. Okay. Oakland Athletics average attendance this year is 8,100. So if the Aviators got up to like, no, the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs are, have the highest average attendance in minor league baseball and it's 7,900. So at most it's a, it's the best the Aviators can do is a trade off 8,000 to 8,000, same amount of fans. The Dodgers, 48,000 average. Here's a question. The A's are going to be playing in Sacramento, right? AAA stadium next year. Mm -hmm. The outfield is grass, like the burns. Mm -hmm. Are they going to put tickets there? Are you setting me up? No, I, I, I just realized this. Do you not know that 
No, I don't know. You don't know anything about this? I'm sure people at home don't because it's just like a Twitter world thing. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> A's fans, not even A's fans, people on Twitter that just like to fight uh, still are in my replies acting like I support John Fisher. Because mm. I said, I think my tweet was, that sucks, but seeing the Yankees play at a minor league park would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Because you can you sit on the berm. And right. Watch some baseball and judge hits a home run to you in the berm. I still think that's true. I still think John Fisher is a horrible owner and should be not able to own a team anymore. Yeah. Um, but no, I still get tweets. I said, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Watch the Yankees play and sit on the berm in a minor league complex. That would be kind of cool. So that you. And think- the response was, you. You support you support John Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> I still I still get it. Like oh. I hate it. Uh, All right. So you think that they will sell tickets out there? I guess they will. Why not? If I yeah, I mean Sacramento has had minor league teams before. I mean, they have one right now. Yeah. So the, if you like baseball and your and your team comes to town, you can see them in that facility. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm not supporting the move or John Fisher. He should not be able to own a team. He doesn't even have funding. No. That's crazy. No funding. Well, thing's bizarre. Let's hop back to uh Dallas trip real quick because a few questions came in about Dallas. Mm, uh, Robert okay. Robert Christ, or Robert Christ, I guess, said, Did anyone challenge the world's fastest in that spot full cutie eating record time? I don't know, but maybe like the next visitors to the hotel or the Airbnb did. It's eleven seconds of a cutie. So if anyone sees that. And they want to go book that Airbnb. They could challenge it. They just have to send the footage in. Yeah, they need for the it footage. to be accepted. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't know of any. Yeah. Um, um, M. Rackin said uh, it was awesome watching the game and hearing you on the broadcast for cricket. Uh, really putting in the work to help cricket grow in the U.S. And you sounded great. How about that? Any plans for continued appearances on MLC content? Well, their season just wrapped up. Congrats to Washington Freedom, Ricky Ponning, Steve Smith, their friend Justin Dill. Mm. Uh, they won. So next year, the next season starts. And yeah, if it works out, it's hard because it's the middle of, middle of summer when um, like all-star break is and my family vacation, although we might be moving that to a different time next year. So it's just a hard time. Corey Anderson made an awesome play in the semifinal. I've been meaning nice. to post that. And bare hand catch. It was cool. I saw Calvin Savage holding an MVP trophy of some sorts. Player of the match. So Sanjay Krishman Murtha, I forget what his name was. Young Sanjay from the Woogas. Yeah. He won player of the match for the Unicorns. And then the next game, Calvin Savage won player of the match. So the warehouse kind of showed up. Okay. Did Sanjay post a picture with his trophy? Um, that should be a warehouse post, both of them. I think they might have. Well, Crick Nate made um, videos of both for... Um, his account, and then we probably shared with uh, with us. Okay. Sanjay, unicorn, player of the match. Google, image, pictures of him, but not with the trophy. Okay. Uh, Krishna Murtha, Krishna Murtha, Krishma Murtai. I forget. And then one other question came in, or no, not a question. This is just a thank you to uh, Retro Ret. He said, if you need a B or C plot, it has to be speeding, speed eating a boomstick or going against each other with a boomstick. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's we screenshotted your comment and then did yes. it in the video. So. Yeah, I screenshotted that retro het. Ret. Retro ret. Retro het, maybe even. Yeah, and maybe. then um, we didn't speed in it, but we split it. Not good. Not good. It didn't look good. No, but it wasn't good. Like, that's my problem with it. It's so big, I don't know how you make it good. Well, the way you ate it, you ate, uh, you just left bread. That was funny. I took a bite. All the hot dog came with it, and there was bread left, and I had no idea. My reaction is good. I just looked down like, what? Not good. It's crazy. I didn't enjoy the boomstick. All right, uh, we got to talk about another stadium experience you've been on. Uh, you alluded to it or did talk about it on Talking Yanks, I guess, last night or whenever that was because uh, you, you went up on Amtrak, shout out Amtrak, yes, to yes, Fenway, yes. 
but you were uh, toppled in your seats. Oh, Garrett Cole scratch for tonight's start. Traded. What? General body fatigue. Wow. Damn. All right. Uh, Fenway was good. They need ushers because we were surrounded by the autograph hounds and it was, it was nuts, man. Like I have one video of it. We couldn't sit in our seats and we didn't want to be jerks and be like, Hey, these are our seats. Cause they're, some of them are young kids. Some of them are adults that shouldn't be doing it. Uh, and they like, you know, people coming and say hi to us and we're like interacting with people, but like, you know, be nice to sit down. We were getting close to game time. Sure. And then. One usher came and showed us where our seats were, but didn't kick anyone out. So we still couldn't get to them. Uh, and then the next lady came and she was like, do you want me to move them? And Jake was like, desperately, yes. So she did, but then they didn't move. It was, dude, it was a scene. And it was smelly as all. Get out. It okay. was gross. It was um, gross. But then it was a beautiful night. The seats were nice. The game, yeah, he's lost, but it was a crazy game. Yep. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. And, it, I mean, we tweeted it. Judge noticed you and actually did a point yeah judge came over and signed autographs right in front of us when he hit the home run biggest home run ever he like looked our direction and did like a little like kind of like shrug or get up or something it was cool he did that another time when we went but he didn't say anything when he was signing autographs no it was little kids it was like mayhem right like it was crazy yeah he's so big i mean yeah what judge what was it, 2018 when I went to spring training and he said hi and I was no one at that point? Like, we weren't big at all. And he just, like, recognized me and said, what's up, big dog? Okay. I have a yeah. video of it. He's in the know. Yeah. Smart guy. Um. All right. A few more wrap-up topics here. Not questions. But if you have questions, leave them below. Um. Oh, our Savant session, of course. I wanted to call that out in case you didn't see it. But... uh. While we were at All Star, we posted last, I think September, we filmed the Savant session with the two Brewers rookies, now sophomores. Yeah. Uh, it did well on YouTube, 21K last time I saw. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. People liked it? Yeah, a lot of comments liking the two of them, which, hey, maybe at the end of the day, it was better that we waited so long because Bryce Terang and he's like an All Star, basically. South Relix having a good year. Yeah, People like that. We filmed that so long ago. So long ago, and we just had it in the bank for whenever we needed it. And we needed it. I like Savant sessions. It's a fun concept. It was a very quiet, sleepy day. Remember, I wasn't even supposed to be in the office, but they were coming. Yeah. No one else was here. Yeah, it was very quiet. Yeah, and they were very quiet. Yeah, they're quiet guys. Yeah. Well, that's why that video at first we didn't know if it was going to play, but ended up being all right. Um. All right. Last. Last two bullets here before we ask a couple questions down below. Um, we Dylan sees through a no hitter. Congrats to you. And then we made shirts shortly after. Are you clapping clap for the shirts? Just clapping for our, our team. Yeah. yeah. And sees. Good job. Yeah, you too. Um, but yeah, the shirts went up. Three shirts designs almost immediately. That was awesome. Shout out to Blake and Sarah. Um, but there were like a few instant comments I saw on Twitter of like, Oh, you shouldn't put his face on there. He's not making money for it. So I don't know. I just wanted to throw this in here. Not that those Twitter meme people would ever watch this, but just to explain like that. The, no, he is making money from it. Yeah. It's, we are partnered with the MLB PA. So when you see shirts with guys faces on it, they're sig like, it's got a signature on there. Um, yeah, that's what that is. We have to get it approved. Mm -hmm. Whatever. People just like getting mad. Like shirts is the biggest thing people waste their energy on getting mad in the comments. No one's buying this. Okay, don't buy it. It doesn't cost us money to put up a shirt. Yeah. We can put up, I can put up a shirt right now that says bloop bloop. And if no one buys it, there's no harm. You want to do that. Now, there is when there's big designs and you pay a creator to make the designs, then there you could be wasting effort. But people buy shirts that we make. We're smart about it. Yes. 
But I don't even like. I don't even care. That's such such such. It's a very common. I'm I'm doing the internet. I'm not a human. I'm just doing what what I've seen others do, and then eventually you like stop. Um, but yeah, I mean, good for that guy for wanting Cease. Yeah, to get a cut of shirts about him. That's Agreed. noble of them, and we agree. That's why. In August of 2020, I reached out to MLBPA and said, let's work together. Yep. Because I don't like making shirts and the player's not getting a cut. Andrew Chafin to the Rangers. Um, All right. Last point here is a cricket one. Ricky Ponting, if I'm saying that correct. Yep. Ponter. Ponter here had a little baseball take. He said, you go to a baseball game, it's four hours. There's not a lot of excitement. It's less than one home run hit per game. If you look at it that way, compared to what three hours of cricket can bring to a younger generation, that's the way we should be looking at trying to promote the game in the United States. Uh, Crick Nate, ref Nate, uh, you know, disagreed, sent out a tweet saying that's uh, not the best of takes, but wanted to hear your thoughts as well. Yeah, we spent a lot of time with uh, Punter Ricky Ponting during the World the uh, World Cup, and he was awesome to talk to. He was like very interested. We did like a whole two hour car ride. We were talking about baseball. We were talking about cricket. Very interested. That to me is the same thing as an American being like, "Well, baseball is way more exciting than cricket. Cricket lasts for five days, and and nothing happens, and it's just just kind of not knowing what's actually going on in sport and." Just the direct, like, the fact that people, and, like, I don't even know if Ricky stands by this take. He's probably asked a question and just gave the answer that was, like, there, like, flippantly. It would, what my guess would be. And now everyone's running with it. But I don't understand, and I, I understand it's because of the history of America and the and, and England and, and cricket was played here in the U.S., wanted baseball they wanted their own sport mm. so they kind of like shit all over cricket oh didn't know that and to promote baseball sure uh because cricket was popular here and during the like gilded age when the u.s really wanted its identity it's you know rich people it's societies and baseball cricket was like the gentleman's game baseball was like the rough and ruffians like hooligan gang mm. it was like you know spitting tobacco and sharing chili and eating there's good books on it um this is like what, 1800s? Yeah, yeah, late 1800s. So, or mid. So, that's like, we've grown with this, like, you have to compare the two and one's better than the other. They're very similar. If you enjoy one, you would enjoy the other if you understood it because they're very similar sports. And you don't have to, like, take, they don't have to be compared because you can't even compare them. So, like, I'll break Ricky's stuff, ding down. Baseball's four hours long and nothing happens. For a couple years, yeah. Sure. That was kind of true. They're two and a half hours now. There's more action. There's more base running. But yeah, there was a point where I was like, this is four hours and not much is happening. Um, He says there's only X amount of home runs hit per baseball game. And there's way more hit in cricket. Due to the nature of the sports, cricket has a flat, wider bat that's not condensed and as hard the ball is hard but it gets beat up over the course of time and the bowlers throw it slower so they don't hit the ball as far it's fine sixes are still exciting some sixes are from home plate to second base yeah they're like 200 feet um the average home run is 400 feet the longest home run hit in cricket history is 400 feet so they're not you should not compare them because the way baseball's played and the way cricket played are for a reason. Um, and I would tell cricket people, and I always do that, baseball is much more like test cricket. It's a pitcher's game. It's defense. It's momentum swings and all that. And cricket, T20 cricket, is way more like every pitch. Something's, like I do very much enjoy what he's saying. Like every pitch, something's getting put in play. You're going to see way more sixes than you do home runs because the nature of the game. Yeah. But, but they're not like... They shouldn't be like compared like that. That's just human nature, I guess. T20 cricket, that's what, like, I don't even think of it as T20. I just, that's cricket. That's the only yeah. cricket I've ever watched. 
Um, I don't even know if the U.S. competes in the longer forms. No, you can't. But. You can't. You're not allowed to until you're, like, good enough, uh-huh. which is a little silly. So, yeah. Yeah. They're, they are fairly close in my mind. But, uh, yeah, everything you said is right. It's... It's worth a reason. It's the same thing like cricket fans make fun of baseball players for not wearing a glove. It's like, well, if they played barehand, the whole entire structure of the sport would have to be rechanged. It would be endless innings. Yeah, and it's just what you said on the yes, uh, the yes, cricket explanation video still applies. He's saying, oh, there's less sixes or home runs. Well, yeah, because the whole thought of the game is flipped. Yes, like it's, yeah. you're yeah. celebrating wickets. It's true. So you could compare wickets to home runs. Yeah, that is true. Um, fun news. Going to see a warehouse Friday. Yeah, that is that is fun news. Um, I feel like it all came on so quick because we like mentioned it in kind of passing on this show. Yeah. Um, and then I think your quote was like, oh, maybe in two years. And then it still might be. Still, yeah, sure. I think we've looked at available spaces and there were some available in the price range, which it could have not resulted in that. And then it would have been much finer. But now that it did like, Oh, there are some, let's go see that we have. It still would, could be a year. It's like a year minimum. I would think. Yeah. But it's exciting. Yeah. I was, I was excited that like when we told Jack and Zoe, they were excited. Hmm. Everyone that we've told has been like, Oh, nice. Yeah. Fresh air. No dust. Yeah. I think the dust is something that's been on the back of everybody's mind for a while of like, uh, I don't really like that. Yeah. I don't blame them. Yeah. So. Um, two questions before we head out of here. Uh, somebody asked what, in the vein of getting a new ha- warehouse, what production would be improved? Like, what is the next thing that we would improve? Um, we are testing a replay machine. Oh, I said someone. Avid commenter Merrick Wigington asked this question. Excuse me, Merrick. Mm. Um, but we're, we're testing out a replay, uh, new s- replay system. It's like on loan to us. Yeah. We is have it for that, a month. I think it's way too expensive for us to buy it after the month. Yeah. But I don't know. Is that the next improvement, like significant improvement in your mind is replay or is it something else? As far as production of the games goes, um, there's nothing we need. There's things that you could want, but like, where we're at, the amount of cameras we have, the amount of technology we have, the production we're putting on, um, you know, we are at this level price point wise, like budget wise, like we're, we don't need anything bigger. We've gotten to such a good place. Now, if it grows and we can warrant and we get more revenue, which like we're not there yet at all, we would need to really tap into more like like double the views, which is hopefully happening as we continue to grow and it's a long game or more distribution. If we get to a point of like fun money, which we, you know, is not happening, like having a replay machine or or a slow-mo camera, like a phantom Hmm. for some shots, even if they're just social of like, and you need perfect lighting for that. So we've even thought about like renting one for a day and then like getting everyone's pitches for like the, this is what their finger release and the spin and all that is. That would be really cool. Um, or replay the replay thing we have now, it's really expensive. So I don't know if we're going to keep it, but this company is letting us loan it out to see what we think, but it would give us live replay. Uh, like right now our live replay skips frames. So what rose and everyone watches in live time, we make our decisions off of is not what the editors have afterwards. Cause it's like 30 frames per second. And then you plug it into the computer at 60 and it's not quality cause you have to zoom in. It works. It's fine. Like we are yeah. totally fine with that. So we this was supposed this month was supposed to be Blitzball Blitz too. Yep. And I pivoted from that because I always said that's pretty not as inviting for anyone new. Yeah. Let's do just random ass live stream challenges that last a while and they're fun. People want to hang out with us. Um, but because you wanted live replay, we wanted to up the replay quality. So we got in touch with this when Mike and I went to that. Yep. Nap or whatever it was called. It's on this channel. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, lighting, like uh, Tech Dan messaged us a while ago because he was at some place. Um, 
at his new gig that was giving away a bunch of like ceiling lighting, mm. like rigs, but it was in Iowa. So it was like, you know, colored lighting, like spotlight, like someone scores and now the lighting changes. That would be really fun. But again, these are not needs nope. and not imminent because where we're at is where we're going to stay for a little bit until things really start to grow. We get into more revenue streams or more views and all that. Yes. Agree. Um, last one before we get out of here, Zalman asked, John boy, do you own the, we got ice channel or does it belong to Jack and Zoe? It belongs to, well, it belongs to Jack and well, it belongs to Jack and Zoe. They are the IP owners of, we got ice. John boy media has exclusive rights to sell and like market and promote on the channel as they are salaried employees of the company. That's the structure. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Thank and you. They're going down Thursday game to 100 runs. Jack Zoe and Shelfie versus the guts gang. Me, Jake and Joe's down with the ice boys. See you guys there. Goodbye. <laughs>